As India anticipates the Pranapratishta function at Ram Mandir Ayodhya, we delve into three mind-blowing connected stories that defy explanation, shedding light on the underlying mystical forces at play. Each story is in the words of the person in question, leaving no doubt of its authenticity. The first story. Justice Krishna Mohan Pandey was the judge behind the landmark 1986 verdict that opened the lock of the Ram Temple. A few years prior, an astrologer had told him, you will be offered a posting in a small district soon. From there, you will have the opportunity to make history, so do not reject this posting. And soon enough, he was offered a posting in Faizabad district where Ayodhya sits and passed his historic verdict. In his memoir, he says, On the date of the order, when orders for opening locks was passed, a black monkey was sitting for the whole day on the roof of the courtroom in which the hearing was going on, holding the flag post. Thousands of people of Faizabad and Ayodhya who were present to hear the final orders of the court had offered him groundnuts, various fruits. Strangely, the said monkey did not touch any of the offerings and left the place when the final order was passed at 4.40 p.m. The district magistrate and SSP escorted me to my bungalow. The said monkey was present in the veranda of my bungalow. I was surprised to see him. I just saluted him, treating him to be some divine power. The then Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, Mulayam Singh Yadav, retaliated by denying him rightful promotions and his family faced harassment. Yet, eventually he was vindicated and retired as a distinguished judge of the High Court. The Second Story In 2003, the Supreme Court was hearing the issue of Ram Janma Bhumi when one of the judges asked the legal counsel, You quote from the Vedas and scriptures for proving that Rama existed and other relevant issues. Is there any evidence in the scriptures that specify the place of birth of Sri Rama? An old gentleman rose from the group of witnesses. He was Jagadguru Rama Bhadracharya. Being a descendant of sage Vasishta and thus a Brahmana from the Gurukula of Lord Rama, he defended Lord Sri Ram in the case. Portions of his affidavit and cross-examination are quoted in the final judgment by the High Court. In his affidavit, he cited the ancient Hindu scriptures Valmiki Ramayana, Rama Tapaniya Upanishad, Skanda Purana, Yajurveda, Atharva Veda, etc. Describing Ayodhya as a city holy to Hindus and the birthplace of Rama. He cited verses from two works of Tulasi Das which described the destruction of a temple and construction of mosque at the disputed site in 1528 CE and another which mentions the disputed site. Refuting the theory of the original temple being to the north of the disputed area as pleaded by the pro-mosque parties, he described the boundaries of the Janma Bhumi as mentioned in the Ayodhya Mahatmya section of Skanda Purana, which tallied with the present location of the disputed area as noted by Justice Sudhir Agarwal later. The verdict on September 2010 ruled in the favour of uh, Lord Sri Ram and Jagadguru Rama Bhadracharya's testimony was vindicated. But who was Rama Bhadracharya whose inputs were crucial in confirming the birthplace of Sri Rama? Born as Giridhar, the son of a pundit, he lost his eyesight at two months old. His father recited the Vedas to him from a very young age and Giridhar demonstrated a great capacity to memorize every word taught to him. He eventually joined a mutt and became Jagadguru Rama Bhadracharya, contributing to music, literature and education. Fate found him at the Supreme Court that day, where he had exactly the encyclopedic knowledge to be able to aptly answer the judge's inquiry extempore. And now the third and final story. Shri K. Parasaran, the eminent lawyer who headed the legal team representing Ram Lalla, was over 90 years old when the case reached its end. Still, he argued barefoot as a mark of respect, standing over four hours each day for 40 days straight in the last days of the hearing. He refused any fee for his work. He felt his work was divinely guided. And he recounts the following experiences. During a hearing once, the opposition asked, Was there any maternity ward in King Dasharatha's palace? The judge asked me to submit the required details. 
I had a lot of files on the Ram Janmabhoomi case with me and I was thinking of some efficient way of getting the required references from the stack of files. And at that very moment, I noticed that all files except one were stacked vertically. And I immediately asked my assistant to fetch that horizontal file. And when I opened the file, the page which had the necessary references to the question posed by the opposition got opened. Mere words cannot do justice to this episode. It can only be experienced. The next day, the Supreme Court delivered the landmark judgment in favour of the Hindus and declared Shri Ram Janma Bhumi belongs to Shri Ram. The judgment was delivered on a Saturday. The following Monday at 8.45pm in Delhi at my residence, in the second floor, which is an open terrace, about 30 to 40 monkeys came. Can't imagine so many monkeys and that too at 8.45pm. They were playing, jumping, kicking. They kicked the tin covering in the next house where construction was going on. And there was a drumstick tree outside and they broke almost all the branches in their joy. The hand of God has played. Lord Ram has taken care of it. So friends, we come to the end of this episode. 500 years Shri Ram has waited for it. And now the day is finally here. Jai Shri Ram.